Hi, we're going to do a lightning round review of some of the reactions that we've seen so far for organic compounds. So, reactive functional group, alkanes, reaction type, we've got some of those entered already, and I'm going to give you an example of each of them. Combustion is going to be reactions where we burn things in oxygen, and actually everything on this page could burn. Um, we have it listed with alkanes because it's the only thing that alkanes can do. So I could take something like propane, it's in our gas grills, and if I give it a little bit of heat, that's what that triangle stands for is heat, um, propane or other hydrocarbons will burn cleanly to give you carbon dioxide and water and energy. Notice this reaction is not balanced. I won't ask you to balance these alkane combustions um, on your quizzes and tests. Next up is alkenes. We're gonna look at hydrogenation reactions and hydration reactions, both for alkenes, all right? So in order to do a hydrogenation reaction, um, we are going to use um, some kind of metal. You might see platinum, you might see palladium, for example, all right? Um, we are going to, in these hydrogenation reactions, add H2. This is a form, a type of a reduction reaction. So if I draw an example of this, if I take an alkene, alkene is very rich in electrons here, and you will see plus H2, and then you will see some kind of metal over the arrow. In the body, you might also see enzymes that help here. So I'm going to highlight the alkene, and I'm going to use a different color to say, hey, here is my plan for where those H's will add. The H's always add across the double bond. And so my product ends up being an alkane. You can draw that single bond or not, and just recognize that a hydrogen has been added to each side of that double bond. Very similarly, a hydration reaction is going to use acid. And acid, you might see written as H+. You might also see one of our common acid catalysts, which is H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Um, in a hydration reaction, we're going to add water, which is going to be an H and an OH. So similar compound, CH2, CH, we're going to make it a propene this time. You will, in a hydration reaction, always see plus water. And then you'll see acid in some form or another written over the arrow as the catalyst. Again, plan what's going to happen. Um, you're going to see the majority of the hydroxyls add to the middle or the more substituted carbon. Um, it's okay for me this semester if you flip-flop those, but just know that that hydroxyl will most often add to the middle. When I redraw the products now, I have CH3 on the far left here. I have a single bond. I have CH. I've added the OH and a CH3. And here are those groups that were added on. All right. Next up, we have a whole bunch of reactions um, for alcohols. All right. We have both dehydration and oxidation. So dehydration is going to be exactly the opposite of our hydration reactions. Dehydration reactions are also going to use acid, the same H plus or H2SO4 that we saw above, um, except for D is our prefix now. So we're going to lose um, H and OH or remove H and OH. Um, you will see a pattern in these dehydration reactions. You're going to see that you have an alcohol and that alcohol has a carbon that it's connected to. And then you'll always follow over to one more carbon and a hydrogen that's connected to that carbon. Um, this is going to be our pattern that the carbon connected to the hydroxyl and its neighbor are the two atoms that each lose something. We will lose an OH and an H. So we're gonna check out for dehydration, um, primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, and tertiary alcohols. A simple primary alcohol um, looks like this. So alcohol, and now we've just got an acid in some form or another over the arrow. That tells me, hey, I'm using acid, I'm gonna remove water. Um, and so the first thing that I want to write down as one of my products is water. And then I want to see what I'm going to lose. So if I can find my functional group 
and I can see the carbon that that OH is connected to. Draw it out in expanded form if you need to. And then here's the neighboring carbon, all right? Each of those carbons is going to lose something. We will lose an OH, we will lose an H. And so my product ends up being now CH2. And then we have um, the same single bond that was there before, a CH2. But I now, between these two carbons, am going to add a second bond. They both lost something, so they're able to form a new double bond. All right. Um, looking down at a secondary alcohol, same exact pattern. It's just you start with a slightly different looking reactant. So secondary alcohol, we would say that's a more substituted alcohol with an acid. I'm again going to get water. If I can look at my functional group, the carbon it's connected to, and either neighbor, it does not matter which one you choose. And then I can think about, I will lose the OH and then go to the neighbor and lose an H. So my product ends up being CH2 bonded over to a CH and then a CH3. Between these two carbons, I now have a double bond. And I'm just making one red to show, hey, that's the new bond that was formed. Finally, a tertiary alcohol. So here I have CH3, C, CH3, OH, CH3. Again, dehydration. I've got some acid to help remove that water. Um, same method, find your hydroxyl group, find the carbon it's connected to. I have three neighbors to choose from now, so let's just go to that neighbor. Plan, lose an OH, lose an H, and then redraw. So I end up with CH3 is untouched, a C and an untouched CH3. I now have a CH2 here, and because these have each lost something, I have a double bond between them. So that is taking a look at our um, alkanes, our alkenes, and some alcohol dehydrations. Next up, we're going to look at alcohol oxidations. Alcohol oxidations um, are going to be very similar, okay, except for now we will use an oxidizing agent. And for oxidizing agent, we will write a bracket O over the arrow. Um, here, we are going to, again, start with an alcohol. And in that alcohol, we will see that the O is going to, oh, sorry, um, we are going to lose two H's. So we will lose an H and then another H. Um, so oxygen will lose an H and its neighboring carbon will lose an H. That means we will always see two H's being removed. If I write these out, primary, secondary. Um, same chemicals as above. If I take this compound, I have now an oxidizing agent over the top of it instead. Um, here's my functional group, and I'm looking for the H on the O and the H on the neighboring carbon. Those are going to be removed, um, taken away by the oxidizing agent. So I'm left with CH3, CH, and now I have a double bond to O. We often draw that vertically. Um, and one of those double bonds is new because the C and the oxygen have both lost something. We just got an aldehyde. Next up, CH3, CH, CH3, alcohol. So here's my alcohol. I'm going to lose a hydrogen off of the alcohol. I will lose a hydrogen off the neighboring carbon because you see an oxidizing agent recopy the things that didn't change, and now I have a double bond between the carbon and oxygen and a CH3. So I have an aldehyde here, and here I have a ketone when a secondary alcohol is oxidized. Finally, and this might be the trickiest one, this and the dehydration here of tertiaries, you want to pay special attention to these. So CH3, C, CH3, CH3, I have a tertiary alcohol. I highlight that alcohol. I look over the arrow and I see that it's an oxidizing reaction or oxidation reaction. I need to find the things that I lose. I first lose the H on the O and then I go to its neighboring carbon 
And if you look, this carbon is connected only to other carbons. So there is no second H to take. Therefore, we say that tertiary alcohols cannot react. They cannot be oxidized. All right, we can dehydrate a tertiary alcohol. We cannot oxidize a tertiary alcohol. Moving down to our last couple of reactions here, we have now aldehydes and ketones. So taking a look at our aldehydes. Um, aldehydes, when we oxidize those, again, we are going to use an oxidizing agent. This is an exception to our reactions we've seen so far. We normally gain two or lose two hydrogens. Here, we're gonna use our oxidizing agent instead to add an oxygen. So here's what that looks like. I take an aldehyde and I oxidize it. That oxidizing agent supplies oxygens that I'm gonna add right here next to the carbonyl. And so I end up with the same atoms a new oxygen and that same hydrogen there. I now have a carboxylic acid. So when you oxidize aldehydes, you get a carboxylic acid. Next up, I can also reduce aldehydes. So now we're going to use a reducing agent and reducing agent is the bracket H. Um, this is going to allow me to add two H's. All right, so I want to add two H's. Same compound, but now we're going to do the opposite. So we have a reducing agent. That reducing agent is going to be able to add hydrogens to each side of the double bond. Double bonds are rich in electrons, so they're very reactive. And so I get CH3, C, now a single bond, and then I would have added on to this um, an H. And I have H2 here now um, because I've gained a hydrogen. You could also write this as CH3, CH2, OH. Note that when you reduce aldehydes, you always get primary alcohols. Last reaction here, um, reduction. So again, we're going to use a reducing agent. Again, we're going to add two hydrogens. Um, let's take a fairly small ketone reduce it. Reduction means I'm going to add H's across that double bond. And so what I get is CH3, C up to the O, CH3, and I've added an H to each side of that double bond. Um, that's a good way to just leave it expanded a bit. A final thing to note, your ketones um, cannot be oxidized. So that would be another no reaction. So I hope that um, review of all the reactions is helpful for you and you might want to rewrite them a few times until you learn them really well.